So I seen this post on Instagram from this page called Fierce Fatty where they discuss the 28 benefits of being fat. I'm going to go through this list and we are going to talk about every single one. At the end of each discussion, we will decide if the point is correct, subjective, or wrong. Let's begin. Number one, being part of a community. You know, Sure, being part of a community can be good for your mental health, but there's plenty of communities that circle around unhealthy behaviors such as smoking, drug use, drinking, etc. But on the technicality, we will call number one correct. Number two, we are incredible and resistant. And this is subjective girl boss nonsense. Number three, easy to find in a crowd. One third of Americans are obese. You don't stand out like you think you do. So we will call this... WRONG! Number four, belly shelf. <sighs> Subjective. Number five, bigot filter, screen out fat bulbs. Let's be generous and call this correct. Number six, harder to kidnap. You get the same, if not bigger, benefit from being muscular. Like, who is going to kidnap the rock? But let's call this correct. Number seven, decreased mortality. In certain studies, such as those done by Flegel and others 2013, it has been shown that overweight people have lower mortality risk than normal weight individuals, and class one obese people have mortality on par with them, while obesity class two and three show increased mortality. Class one obesity is defined as having a BMI between 30 and 35. That doesn't include our queen, Miss Fierce Fatty. Convenient that you neglected to mention that. So even taking studies like this at face value, Miss Fierce Fatty is not invited to the party, unfortunately. Now, why don't we just take things like this at face value? Well, humans are complex. And when you are looking at how a particular issue affects health, it is important to consider outside factors such as alcohol habits, smoking habits, and a whole host of other behaviors. Otherwise, you can run into these sort of paradoxes. We find a similar pattern with alcohol consumption in cardiovascular disease. Now, we know alcohol is toxic, so in some studies, we do find that minor alcohol consumption actually conveys a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease. Why is this? The answer is that we weren't t taking into account variables. In this study, when researchers accounted for the fact that people who consume alcohol lightly tend to engage in a healthier lifestyle, all levels of alcohol consumption actually increased the risk of cardiovascular disease. Looking at variables is one of the most important details when it comes to epidemiological studies. So what does the research that does account for these factors say in regards to obesity? Well, buckle up. This study published in 2016 by Veranis and colleagues was a 32-year longitudinal study that looked at the relationship between body, weight, lifestyle, and mortality. This study included multiple lifestyle factors that, were, that include age, alternated healthy eating index score, physical activity, smoking habits, and alcohol consumption. After accounting for these various factors, the results were unsurprising. Just by excluding people who smoked, the healthiest BMI range was found to be between 18.5 and 22.4. For this study, the reference BMI range was 22.5 to 24.9. In this study, just after accounting for smoking habits, those in the 18.5 to 22.4 range had an all-cause mortality risk reduced by 3% while those in the 25 to 27.4 range had a risk increase by 9%. A 26% increase was seen in those with the BMI from 27.5 to 29.9. A 54% increase was seen in the class 1 obese. A 127% increase was seen in the class 2 obese. And a 196% increase was seen in the class 3 obese. To put into perspective how bad this is, all-cause mortality was only increased by 63% in the underweight, so everyone above class 1 obese fared worse than the underweight. Again, this is just what happens when we account for smoking. When accounting for the other factors, the picture becomes that much more clear. The healthiest people were in the lower to middle part of the healthy range. With that said, number 7 gets a definitive Wrong! Number eight, better cancer survival rates. This meta-analysis by Petrelli and colleagues published in 2021 looked at data from over seven studies consisting of over six million patients and found that overall, 
obese people had lower odds for survival for cancer as a whole, but for lung cancer, renal cell sarcoma, and melanoma, the survival odds were higher. For lung cancer, researchers noted that most of the studies looking at the condition did not define cancer cachexia, which is a wasting condition associated with lung cancer, and that is important because it's not uncommon for large amounts of weight to be lost upon diagnosis. It's not uncommon to find an obesity paradox in diseases associated with wasting for three reasons. One, it takes longer for fat bodies to waste. Two, formerly obese people are moved into the normal and overweight category as a result of the condition. Three, a given treatment could be associated with weight gain. Researchers also noted a similar pattern in melanoma since this is since this one just said cancer in general and didn't specify on the type and since the research shows that obese people have lower survival odds for cancer as a whole group of diseases number eight gets a wrong number nine strong this is a generalization in general your average fat person isn't going to have too much muscle as a typical diet that leads to obesity is packed full of more carbs and fats while the only macronutrient that can build pro that can build muscle is protein but it is the also the most satiating macronutrient with fat being the least and having the most calories per gram so we will call this one wrong number 10 more tattoo space this is mind-numbingly stupid but i will give it a correct number 11 stronger bones less risk of osteoporosis this is the first one we can say that is true but not on a technicality obese people do have lower risk of osteoporosis higher risk of a whole list of other shit but let's ignore all those number 11 is correct number 12 soft and cozy y'all know muscles at rest are soft right whatever this will also get it correct number 13 more likely to survive disasters. This is so incredibly vague, I can't even come to a decision, so we would just call it undecided. Number 14, great for those with social anxiety because people are less likely to talk to you or sit next to you. There is a common misconception that people with social anxiety just hate everyone and don't want human interaction, but as someone clinically diagnosed with social anxiety, anxiety disorder i can tell you this is not a benefit i love human interaction and i hate being alone and the feeling of loneliness the impasse that a lot of people with social anxiety can't overcome is putting ourselves out there and overcoming that feeling of being constantly judged about little shit that our logical brains know doesn't really matter we don't hate people so i'm going to give this a wrong Number 15, safety conditions, reduced risk from falls. This is true, but it comes with a caveat. While obese people injured in falls are less likely to be injured, according to this study, the obese were more likely to fall to begin with, and according to this study, while injuries in general were less common in the obese who do fall, certain injuries were actually more common, and the obese had longer hospital stays and spent more time on the operating table. With all that in mind, I will be generous in grant number 15, a correct on a technicality. Number 16, more body heat. Oh lord, why didn't you just say, you know, look at how snuggly I am. Yeah. Let's call it correct and move on before I pass out. Number 17, lower risk of cancer and many other conditions. What a coincidence, in my last video I brought this up. According to this study, bariatric patients had 33% less instances of cancer than obese people who just stayed that way. And the risk was 41% lower if we just looked at obesity-related cancers. This alone debunks this nonsense, but here's one more. This 2020 study by Furrer and colleagues gathered data collected from 1967 to 2010 on over 2 million adolescents in Israel. What they found is that regardless of gender, adolescent obesity increased the odds of midlife cancer diagnosis by about 26 percent with that said we can go ahead and just say number 17 is number 18 buoyancy correct but stupid as humans are land mammals number 19 recover quicker when hospitalized with the virus that shall not be named this is going to be our golden wrong this 2020 study by you and colleagues looked at multiple studies and 
Each study that mentioned hospitalization time concluded that obese people stayed in the hospital longer. When pressed on this, she claimed this comes from a study on veterans, but I could not find it. Here's what I did find. A multitude of studies that mention obesity and hospitalization length. And across the board, and even in children, obesity was associated with longer hospital stays. So number 19 gets the most definitive. Wrong! Number 20. Being underestimated and sometimes being able to surprise people. We'll give 20 a correct to be nice. Number 21, visually interesting, entirely subjective. Number 22, improved mental health if fat and happy. Being happy improves mental health, no shit. But this one is too vague to give a judgment, so we will also call this undecided. Number 23, great to have sex with. This is subjective and also a generalization. Number 24, increased wind resistance. I don't see how this is a benefit, but this is correct. Number 25, really cool. This is another subjective one. Number 26, able to hide pregnancy longer. That's great, but you know what obese women should really be worried about? The increased risk of gestational diabetes, birth defects, and miscarriage. This is correct, though. Number 27, empathy. Self-compassion, increased awareness, and understanding of bigotry. Due to the fact that this is a generalization, I'm going to have to say number 27 is... WRONG! And finally, number 28, fat joy. Overcoming fat hate to live minus shame. I can't grade this because it's just wishy-washy, feel-good bullshit. So out of 28 proposed benefits to being fat, 3 were too vague to grade, 8 were flat wrong, Five were entirely subjective, leaving you with 12 out of 28 things on that list that were correct. That's 42%. That's an F. That's my final grade for this post. A fat, no pun intended, juicy, fact-based F. Have a good day.